All right, so um, so I'm not uh, I'm not here to kind of sell HTML5 to you or or detract you from doing it or anything like that. I'm just going to give you our experiences and let you make the decision. How's that? Um, so this talk was called HTML5: A Country with No Roads Yet. Um, but I'm calling it now a country with crappy roads. OK, so it has roads, but they're shitty roads. Um, and, and I'll give you a little bit of background about why I'm saying this. Um, so a little bit of intro on us. Um, we're a Toronto company. We're from Toronto, Canada. Uh, in 2008, we introduced virtual consumables to Facebook. So we were the first game on Facebook that had uh, consumables for sale. Um, we're really old. We were Facebook funded. Um, we have 23 staff now. We're entirely bootstrapped, and that's a very hard road. Uh, so I recommend it. No previous game design experience at all. So we started out as a marketing company, um, building other people's uh, products online, bringing offline products online, and trying to find traffic for those people. So we're really a traffic company first, and then uh, really hated servicing other people's products and other people, and, and decided that we should try to build our own stuff. So, um, so we built a game on Facebook called Mouse Hunt, and Mouse Hunt became a relatively large success early on on Facebook. Um, and now we're doing social and mobile. So uh, yeah, I should go back there. We have uh, Mouse Hunt, Battle Blocks, Magic Pets, which is coming out shortly on Facebook, and Jungle Run is our first uh, iOS title. And uh, yeah, it's, this is going to be an interesting talk because I'm going to go into a couple things. First off is, this is an intro. Uh, I'm going to talk about the good about HTML5, the unknowns that we faced in HTML5, and the bad, and how we, we see it. Uh, and then the takeaway from what we've learned. So we're going to have some questions after that. And why did we pick HTML5? Uh, we thought, hey, a single code base would be cool. We could deploy to multiple devices and uh, only have one code base. Awesome. We were you know, uh, a small team when we started the HTML. We're still a small team. In fact, the, the person who worked on the HTML5 project, one engineer and a part-time artist. So we felt that because HTML was something that we'd already used to make our games on Facebook, that we could uh, easily enough transition into an HTML5 uh, product. So fast prototyping, again, we already knew HTML and manipulated the DOM like crazy. And we're like, let's just do, let's just do HTML5 and see what happens. Uh, we had a pr uh, platform that was already built, that we had already uh, built Mouse Hunt on and other games on Facebook. And it was a small learning curve, we thought. Uh, so those were the impressions that we had. We had prior experience with HTML. Um, and we just figured, you know, maybe the learning curve will be shorter because technically it's just one character difference between HTML4 and HTML5. So we just thought, yeah, that's probably it's probably going to be easy. So um, <laughs> obviously, do what you know. You know, try to focus on your core competencies. Uh, because we're bootstrapped, every decision is based around revenue you know, and whether or not this, this idea is going to make money. So we always take little steps into new categories. Uh, so uh, seeing as we had never made an HTML5 game before, we invested one developer and a part-time artist to the project. And that guy was like um, really interested in HTML5, and so we're like, all right, you know, it's it's uh, it's your paycheck, and and you live or die on this thing, so so go ahead, try it out. And uh, this was our first prototype. It was called Your Turn Go, and uh, the idea was pretty simple. It's it's Battleship um, for Facebook, uh, and it's completely asynchronous. A turn based game using HTML5. We had a, a mobile version, um, 
that this was all just like, this is just my drawings. Like, hey, you sh this, you know, like a punch card, you log in through Facebook, um, and we'll have a game in three weeks. Should be easy. Um, so six months later, um, <laughs> these are the unknowns. How different is desktop Safari from mobile Safari? Because we kind of wanted to tackle the iOS experience first. We didn't want, we didn't really care about uh, the plethora of devices. We really wanted to focus on the large market uh, first. So browser and uh, kind of standards-based browsers that are modern and then uh, mobile Safari. So these were the unknowns. How different is desktop Safari from mobile Safari? Is iOS simulator identical to Safari on the devices? Which was an unknown that we kind of learned was a pretty big unknown and, and ended up uh, causing a lot of problems. Um, are the animation libraries performant? You know, do the things out there, do they, do they actually make games uh, fast? You know, HTML5, there was always the question of whether or not the performance was going to be there, and uh, this was an unknown for us. Um, and we knew that the quality of the performance directly impacted the retention of the users. Having done a lot of A-B testing on, on Facebook and, and seeing how if the reaction time of a game isn't fast enough, you end up losing players, they get frustrated. So we knew that performance was, was a main concern and it wasn't unknown to us. We just had no idea. Uh, do we build for IE support? Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, so <laughs> we ended up not caring and most people don't. Um, so, does Canvas perform well on mobile browser engines, and does the DOM perform any better? And uh, what are the trade-offs there? So we decided to build the game using the DOM because on, on mobile browsers it just happens to perform better, um, and avoided a lot of the libraries and a lot of the stuff that Canvas provides just because, well first off we didn't really know it all that well. And we didn't want to invest the time researching when we needed a game out relatively quickly. And, uh, and we only wanted to make a small investment in the space as research. We take the kind of the research engineering approach to most of our decisions. So the bad of HTML5. Rendering methods. In Canvas, poor performance on, on the devices, we found. Uh, couldn't find an ideal framework and engine. Uh, we just we found ourselves looking through a number of different engines with, uh, and really we did we had one engineer working on the project. So the decision was whether or not we use that engineer to build an engine that would be performant enough to use in a game. But then we we just we wanted to make the game. You know we didn't want to build a platform for HTML5. We won't, we're game designers, so uh, we ended up. Uh, you know, we, we ended up trying, I think we tried like six or seven different libraries for animations. And did they just increase complexity and eliminating, it, it kind of eliminated our ability to use the knowledge that we had learned from all of our DOM-based games, uh, kind of Ajax, JavaScript, HTML-based games, and we would be leaving all of that learned stuff behind. And we just didn't want to make that sacrifice. So um, the rendering methods in the DOM, Though you, there are some things that are, that are hard, uh, there's tons of browser inconsistencies. So we decided to, to focus on a very few browsers. Uh, and that, that even then, there were inconsistencies. And I'm sure if any of you have done any web, web development before, you know this is, this is a problem that's common uh, across the board. Um, there's high performance, but limited effects. So our original game had, you know, and I was talking about this with Henrik earlier, had like animations going crazy. You had, you know, stars popping out of the little menu changes. And, and we were doing like casino style gameplay, spinners at the end of a round. And there were all kinds of different animations we tried. And then we opened it up in Firefox and we were like, this blows. Like, you can't do anything. And then we opened it up in, in, uh, in Chrome, and we were like, this, uh, we built everything for Safari without taking anything into consideration in the other browsers. And it was just a pain in the ass, just horrible experience. So we ended up stripping a lot of the animations out of 
the gameplay just to make the performance cons consistent across the multiple browsers. So that was a major trade-off. Um, uh, polyfills and shims, you know, there are scripts that you can use to add functionalities that are current limitations inside of HTML5. You can do that. What ends up happening is there's, there's code bloat, loading increases, you use losers on, on load, and it just becomes a technical inconsistency again. And you end up limiting the number of people who can then access the game just based on load time and complexities in different browsers. It's just, it's, that was a, a real pain in the ass. Um, generally decreased performance. Um, and again, uh, the goal for us was to take everything that we'd learned and try to make as, as simple a game in as fast a timeline as possible and all of this within the context and the lens of we're a bootstrapped company, we can invest a lot of money into this, how are we going to make it work? So, um, again, the audio. So you've heard about this three, in three sessions now. Uh, the audio sucks. Um, let me go into a little bit of detail than what we've heard. A mobile Safari, you can only play one audio file at a time. So it's just it's it's stupid. I don't know what the hell Apple was thinking. It's stupid. Um, there's we've used a different audio approach for desktop and mobile. So we use Flash when we detect a desktop client, and uh, and use fl the Flash audio uh, on the desktop, and then native on mobile. So uh, there's um, there are a number of users that we put through our user testing who would say like. Uh, when I use the game on my mobile Safari, on my iPhone, uh, there's this really loud sound. And, and is there a way to turn it off? So we put in a button to turn it off uh, on the main UI. And a lot of people were like, OK, so I turn off the sound, and I close it, and now the audio switch on the iPhone doesn't work. <laughs> so like these, the sounds now were persistent even though the volume's all the way down and the switch is off. So there's all kinds of, of really weird technical glitches with audio inside of Mobile Safari. So um, I wanted the goal for this presentation for me was just to kind of lay out the information that we'd seen, uh, share some of my takeaway, and then open it up for Q&A, because I think it's important uh, for, for us to have a dialogue about whether or not it's even a good business decision at this point uh, to, to use HTML5. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people are huge proponents of this technology. And, and if you look at things through the lens of making money, um, reach is a concern, uh, usability is a concern, uh, how, your, how your users are impacted by your game design choices. I'll go into, um, I'll go into a game. So HTML5 is is awesome, but it is not easy. So take, take that home with you. Don't just make the choice uh, for HTML5 without having done some research on the major challenges of HTML5. That's what I would suggest. I still think it's awesome. I do appreciate the, the, the common code base across multiple games. If you build your game as an API, which most people are doing anyways, where there's a back end and there's a front end, then there's no reason you shouldn't attempt something with HTML5. But again, I would, I would make sure that you take an approach that separates the front end from the back end so that you can do all kinds of, of interesting tests. Um, pick your device and focus on it, just like any other technology. You know, I, I was promised early on that that it would just work you know, across all devices. Don't worry about it. Use HTML5. You're just, it's, it, you can then be on every device in the world because the web is on every device. And the fact of the matter is, is it's, it's very challenging to make it work on even one device well. <laughs> so know that and, uh, and, uh, and take that into account and then uh, make your decision from there. But I would say, you know, if I had advice for someone who is saying, hey, can we, should we go into HTML5? I would say, do it, but pick your device. You know, where's your market? Pick early adopters. Who is it who's going to use your product first? And then go from there, if the demand is, is good enough. 
Don't create a be all things to all people product. It's impossible um, to know the browser dimensions of every, well, it's not impossible to know the browser dimensions of every Android device, but you know, someone said there's 396, or there's 3,997 variants of, the, of Android in the world. And, and so it's nearly impossible as a developer to take them all into consideration and make the user experience on each one amazing. So figure out the subset and then work with those. Uh, define your target performance before you start. If you don't define what you absolutely must have in your product before you start building your product, then you end up making a ton of compromises like we did along the way. You know, like, we, we knew what we had envisioned for the product, but what we had envisioned and what we were capable of delivering in the end were two very different things. You know, uh, and, and that is something that is a, a major challenge. Um, so for instance, if, if you want to have awesome animations and super responding clicks, uh, you know, make those priorities and focus on them and, uh, and then go from there and just know that you're going to be making trade-offs along the way because of those decisions. Uh, don't expect everything to just, to just work and, then, and just define your, par your performance well. Um, use technologies which will deliver the X or aha to your users. So this could be HTML5, but uh, it, for us, I'm not sure that that's going, that HTML5 is going to be that for us. For us in AHA, or delivering the X, as uh, former EA execs would say, is, is probably the most crucial thing about game design. Uh, that moment where a gamer picks up a game and immerses themselves enough so that they have like a, oh, I just did that, or oh my goodness, that was awesome. We found that that's, it's harder to deliver that in HTML5 than in technologies where we can increase the performance or, or tune performance the way that we wanted to. We just found it more difficult in HTML5. Um, so yeah, that's the takeaway. Let me show you this game that we built. And I specifically put the beta tag on there so that you would know that it's in beta. And uh, let, me, let me see if I can get out there. Uh, where are you? Switch this over. There you are. Okay. Let me go full screen here. Okay. Ah. 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 See you already. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. So. This is, uh, this is an HTML5 game. Uh, it's, it's, there's ads all over the place. Let me go to, uh, let me go to apps.facebook.com and then um, Battlebox. Because I think it resizes properly. I think it resizes properly in Facebook. Nope. So anyways, here's the, here's the game. It's, uh, it looks really great on the iPad. Looks pretty awesome on the iPhone. It's a, basically a battleship style game. You place your, your attacks and you know, you're trying to find where your enemy's stuff is. You, you know, uh, are ultimately firing and, and, and finding where your opponent is. And you take the turn, and then you go to your next game, and you're playing against someone else who then has uh, their blocks, and they're positioning it, and so on and so forth. It's, it's Battleship, right? It's Battleship uh, on the social web. You can go to battleblocks.hitgrab.com on your mobile device and play it there. Uh, you know, something that I hadn't considered that Hen Henrik mentioned earlier in his talk was that uh, you can play this through Twitter. Uh, through the Twitter app on your iPad, you can play it through uh, through Flipboard. I tested both those things. Thank you for that. I'm going to use that, um, <laughs> and we're totally going to 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 try to reach more people that way for, um, with this game. But uh, ultimately, that's the that's the experience inside of uh, of the browser. Let me switch back to 
this. All right. So on mobile, it looks like this. So you start a battle. You um, play with your friends. You, you can pick a random friend, blah, 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 choose friends. It's got all the same kind of mechanics as, uh, as something like uh, draw something would. So it's asynchronous gameplay. Um, there's no real sounds, which in this kind of game, I actually think is quite important to, to get the feedback that you're attacking something and it explodes and you, you want that kind of cerebral or, or kind of, you, you just want that experience. I'm not sure if it would affect retention or if it would affect monetization at all, but I mean, uh, it could, who knows? I haven't done that test. I'm gonna have to run that test. Um, yeah, so you got questions? Anyone, questions? I just wanted to be as, as forthright as possible. I, I, and, uh, and be as honest as our experience was so that you get feedback uh, from our experience. Anyone? With, yes? I have a question about the, are you giving up with HTML5? Are you giving up with HTML5? We're going to release this game. It's been submitted to the App Store, so it was submitted two days ago. Uh, we'll let the numbers tell us whether or not we give up. Is that fair enough? We'll, we'll look at what the retention is. We'll try to make it perform the way that users demand the performance to be. Uh, assuming that demand is there, uh, we will try to stick with HTML5. I, I think based on the numbers. Uh, I can tell you this. We launched our first game on iOS 60 days ago and have seen tremendous organic growth. So we've had half a million downloads in 60 days. And that's a native app that was coded over, you know, basically two months. Cost us 15 grand to make. This game probably cost us about 45, 50 grand to make. Um, took a lot longer, and uh, and basically it would have to recoup those costs. And uh, we don't know if it's going to do that. So we'll see. Pro if it doesn't. We likely will give up on HTML5 until the authoring tools and the browser performance uh, uh, across the major providers are good, are good enough. Yeah. Anyone else? Am I, am I like way short? Was this present? Yes. So the question is, how do we consider other platforms to create the HTML5 yes. game on? We have. We looked at other platforms. Uh, I think Ludia is one. Um, we are trying to, to, to really figure out whether or not we are going to retain a lot of the knowledge that we'd learned from making HTML-based games in the past. And we, we didn't want to lose all of that learning because it would change the amount of investment we would have to make in the, in the game. You know what I mean? So, um, so the real benefits we were looking for were the ability to wrap the game to make a native app that was distributed through the iOS app uh, ecosystem. Right? So that was one of the first things we wanted to make sure. PhoneGap allowed us, allowed us to do that. Um, and then whatever engine you know, we would use for the animation and for the other, the canvas kind of approach we looked into. Well, we ended up finding out that it, it would just, it would just lag. They were laggy. We did experiments and they were laggy. And we knew that if we wanted to do things quickly, we needed to kind of focus on the DOM, which was where a lot of our learning had already happened. So that, that was the trade-off for us. Any other real qu uh, questions? Ideas, notions, can I give you any advice? Is there anything that you want to know from me that I can tell you, uh, in knowing that I'm, I'm being honest with you and that we're not 100% pos positive HTML5 is going to be super awesome for everyone forever? Uh, if you want an honest response, I I'm happy to give it to you right here, right now. Yes? So with Canvas, I, th I think that that is probably a wise decision if you're going to use HTML5. 
if, if you want to focus on something that is browser-based gaming, you know, that is on the desktop, there are 1.5 billion browser users in the world. Um, the, the uh, Google Chrome, you know, Chrome just basically overtook IE as the, one, as the dominant browser in the world. So the reach is, is awesome. There's the potential there is great if you want to make uh, games with HTML5. So I'm not going to deny that there's a business opportunity there. Um, the question for us was we were trying to enter the mobile space. So ca using Canvas in the browser is probably a really good idea, but I would, I would definitely refine my focus on that specific space for now. And the potential with that is great because you could then, if you make a product that makes money, then you can take that product to mobile relatively easy with a, you know, with a code base that already exists and, and potentially in the future see some real benefits from, from then moving over to mobile. But I would probably have chosen that approach. Instead of just deciding to do mobile and a, and a browser-based game as kind of a cross-platform play, I would pick a platform and do that well first. Yes? Very good questions. The first question is, um, is, is the, is, are we using PhoneGap to wrap? The, and how? I would love to answer that question. I, I need my CTO to answer it fully. Um, and the second question is, can you use Facebook credits uh, to pay within the, yeah, okay. So on, on Facebook, Yes, you can use Facebook credits. We detect whether or not you're using um, the, uh, the WebKit uh, user agent inside of the iPhone app, and we deny you the ability to purchase cr uh, goods through Facebook credits. And, and then um, ba basically in-app purchases are the way we monetize the package inside of uh, the iOS. Framework. So sorry about the uh, about the wrapper question. Yes, anyone else? Cool. I think I went a little a little short. We're good. Cool. Thanks, guys.